Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and we're going to jump back into Blood Red Skies. We're going to get the game started here. Uh, I'm going to be, again, flipping back and forth a little bit more in this video between the overhead and the handheld camera. That way, when we're getting in close, I'll bring in the, the handheld, and when we're overhead, that way I can show you kind of the, the general lay of the land. All right, so I got us a little match set up. Uh, similar to a scenario they started in the game, I'm going one plane less uh, from scenario two, just three planes on each side. Uh, to make things simple and give us a little variety though, because it was calling it was calling for all aircraft on each side. So those three Spitfires and these three uh, 109s to all have pilot skill three, which wouldn't give us as much variety. So I stuck with the ones that I showed you in the previous video, two, three, and four for each side. Got them both deployed, uh, ready to go. We're gonna start the Spitfires off a little bit closer. They're kind of flying in a wing, coming in, seeing what they can get uh, going, and the ME 109s are a little more spread out. I don't know if it's uh, uh, historically accurate or not, but change things up just a little bit. And just for this first uh, turn here, we're gonna start with the Germans having initiative for any tiebreakers just in case there's any aircraft that have the same advantage level and all that other good stuff uh, going on for them. What you're gonna do in this scenario is to determine your starting advantage level, because remember this game's all about that advantage, is you're gonna roll a single D6 on a one to two, it's disadvantaged, three to four, it's a uh, neutral, and five, six, six being the spade, it's going to be advantaged. So we're just gonna go boom, 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 and then down the line with our Spitfires, so let's, Roll for our first 109. He is disadvantaged. No, no bueno. Not good for him. You do not want to start that way. All right, next 109. He is neutral, so he gets to stay. And third one actually gets start advantage. Perfect. One of each. We'll pull him back here. And I'll be a little more precise about my movements when we get the, the game started. But he was roughly about there. So that way... You can tell looking at him, this fellow's leaned back, straight on, nose down. So he is at the worst position to start off with. So his first action is probably going to be to pop her back up. Now we got to do the same for our Spitfires. First one is going to be disadvantaged. Second one's going to be disadvantaged. <laughs> Not good. And third one is going to be uh, advantaged. Now, before... I do this, all right? So let's remember, we're looking at them. We got disadvantaged, disadvantaged, advantaged. Before I do that though, before the game gets started, any deployment cards, all right? Theater cards of your uh, action deck that get played during deployment get played at this part. So the radar support card here, you're gonna play it during the deployment. And this is for the Spitfires make a maneuver test for each friendly plane. Any that score a success automatically begin the game with advantage. That's why I haven't gone ahead and changed them. So they're going ahead and playing that card. The Germans also have a theater card that they could play. We're gonna say they played it, but uh, not actually do it because I wanna keep some clouds in the game. Uh, this one you would also play during deployment but you will remove up to two cloud markers of your choice from the table. We're gonna leave our cloud markers because I wanna have those for examples of gameplay, but let's say you did have extra cloud markers in the match that you didn't wanna have, you could get rid of them with this card. So these cards are taken care of from our little action deck. And now we're going to make a maneuver test. Now that maneuver test, is just like our little dodge test there. So we're gonna have their agility plus their pilot skill equals the number of dice. And actually it shows it right there, boom, <laughs> at the bottom. But it's the it's the same thing. Pilot skill plus agility equals the number of dice and you're looking for spades. Now we're only gonna have to do this twice because that third guy back there, he is advantaged already. So we don't have to worry about him, but these two, are disadvantaged. So if they pass, they all get to start as advantaged. He is going to be rolling his agility plus his pilot skill, pilot skill four. So he gets seven dice. 
Unfortunately, he's only gonna get five dice. So let's gather up our dice here. And we'll have seven dice to start with. Nice, all right, shake them up just a little bit. And you gotta be kidding me, you failed it. Damn, <laughs> not one six. And we'll snake out a couple of these and have the second guy do his agility test. And boom, I should have given him <laughs> the spade, but it fell out of the dice tray. So that is unfortunate for the Spitfires. Even with that, they failed. So we're gonna drop both of them down to disadvantage, pointing them down. But notice there is a cloud right over here. So they could dip into that cloud, take advantage of it. All right, so looking at our layout here, you can see we've got all our aircraft set up both sides, both with their advantage levels. Let's grab our reference sheet here. Let you guys see it. Now starting off, it's advantaged and then the highest pilot skill. The highest pilot skill advantaged is going to be our German. So we do not have a tie here. Ooh, wait, the back one is advantaged. I forgot the Spitfire. Let's pop him back up. All right. so. That's how they're starting out. Now, looking at this, advantaged and then by pilot skill, that means that German aircraft is gonna go and then that Spitfire over there is going to go. And that would be all of our advantaged. Our neutral is gonna be our single 109 over here. And then when we get into the disadvantaged, we have Ha, and they're not lined up on pilot skills at all. So it's going to be one Spitfire, then the one 109 over here, and then the last Spitfire. So no one's actually lining up. That makes it very, very easy. And now you guys are seeing what I'm talking about with this game, that uh, the initiative essentially changes round to round. It's kind of like pilot skill level in uh, X-Wing, except it changes depending on your position, not necessarily your position on the board, but that can affect it, uh, but your relative position, you know, speed and, and height and things like that. So I like how that's in there. Nothing is really guaranteed. And especially like I was talking about when you make this pl uh, pilot action at the end of your turn, choosing to climb or not chooses when you activate on the next turn, right? So sometimes, you want to skip that shot because you need to go first later on. Uh, simple game, but deep enough with this advantage system to make it to where I think it could solo uh, solo relatively well. Because that is the big thing for me when it comes to games like this is the initiative system. Who's going and when are they going uh, really changes things up. When you have just an I go, you go system. I think it kind of gets into a rut and that's uh, any type of war game. Uh, but things like chit draw or these mechanics or like uh, we saw in Black Seas, definitely check it out if you haven't, I have covered that one, where the advantage, the initiative was determined by the wind in which direction it was coming in. So ships that got the wind first got to activate first. So you could go first one turn, but if you sailed with the wind, then you're gonna be going last the next turn. Loved, love, love, love that system. All right, so now we get to choose what we are doing with our advantaged guy here. Now he could lose some advantage if he wanted to and gain some extra speed, but I don't think we wanna have him do that just yet. Now, before we continue any further, I do need to mention that we do have a hand of cards that I just draw the top three off of each deck, giving us an action deck to go with uh, for this turn because I was eyeballing it for the ME 109, and he could play something like this, great dive on a plane with this trait, burning advantage to dive. Instead of adding the six, you would add the maximum move instead when burning advantage to dive. But that's not a huge deal for him since his maximum move is seven. So it'd give him a, a little bump, but not a huge bump. So we're not gonna worry about that too much, but we will take our little maneuver stick here. We'll point it right him, right there at him at the front, and we'll pop him up to seven. All right, and this is the one thing I hate. It slots in very well, but when you're playing the game with one hand, it's hard to do that stick. So we're just gonna do like that. 
Now, he could make a turn here if he wants to. This is where he's doing his pilot action. What does he want to do? And I think what I'm going to do is let him just stay there instead of turning, because on the next turn, he could burn advantage if he wanted to, something like that. But maybe fly him into this cloud and then have him come in, kind of hit the flank of the Spitfires. Actually, I'm going to turn him just a bit. And since we know he's got a 45 degree turn, we know we can turn him just a little hair, just like that. So he's going to be pointing out this side of the cloud and maybe come in on their six on the next turn. Boom, perfect. Now we're going to go with this aircraft. The Spitfires were known for having good turning, so their trait card is that tight turn. On uh, a plane with this trait during its movement, the plane may make its normal 45 degree turn at any point in its movement, ju not just at the end, all right? So you have the ability to make a little 45 degree turn, any point, or not any point, at the end of your movement. Remember, you don't have to go the full movement, you can go a little bit shorter, but that's your normal turning. You can burn advantage to turn up to 180 degrees at any point during your turn, but he would have to drop from advantage to neutral. He doesn't necessarily want to do that. So he could play that card if he wanted to. I think we're just gonna have him stick with going straight for now. Let him just dip forward, kind of keep our planes together and see how things end up. And then we'll just slide him off as such. And you guys will have to just bear with me as I'm playing it one-handed uh, both sides. So we'll do that with him. And as his pilot action, I don't think there's anything he really needs to do. And do I want to turn him at all? Maybe a little turn in that way to deal with that aircraft, but maybe keep him focused this way so they can tag team the guys down over here. I think we're going to stick with that. We'll see if that works, if divide and conquer works. So we've marked both of these aircraft as done. Now we go to our neutral. Neutral is over here and he is going to come flying in as well. Same thing, seven inches. Does he want to go a little faster maybe? All right, so we're gonna take and just bring him forward as well. Oof, pop him up to here. And we're gonna go ahead and give him a little bit of a turn. See where we can get him to end up. We'll put our little stick there and he can turn all the way up to that 45 degrees. So we're gonna have him head down in this direction. And for his pilot action, we're gonna have him climb so he can gain some advantage. So keep him as good as possible. So we're gonna have him in just like that. Now our neutrals have gone, all right? So now we're back down to the disadvantaged aircraft. We're gonna have first this one and then the other, the last 109 go, and then the last Spitfire. So we're gonna bring him forward, his seven, and now I know he's gonna be flying into this cloud cover, all right? And he obviously can't burn any advantage. He doesn't have any advantage to burn. <laughs> but he can play games when he gets into this cloud potentially. So thinking about cutting him this way, maybe do the same with the other aircraft, see if we can uh, pick off one down here to the bottom. So let's pull this maneuver stick out and we're gonna give him just a slight turn this way. Don't have to worry about me uh, measuring it. And just to go ahead and fill him out, we'll go ahead and have his pilot action be to pop himself back up to neutral. Now, if he were already neutral, I probably wouldn't worry about it since I know on the next turn he would be and heading towards his cloud, which is gonna drop him back to neutral. But in that circumstance, he could burn advantage. So when he goes through the cloud, instead of coming out of the cloud at disadvantaged from burning that advantage, he would come out as neutral. It's a way to use these clouds to your advantage, uh, <laughs> to your benefit. I gotta be careful about using the word uh, advantage in this game, uh, just willy nilly, because it can be used uh, multiple different ways. 
All right, so we got a little turn with him and that takes care of that one. So we will pop back over here to our last 109 and we've got to pop him going forward. Again, he's disadvantaged, so not a whole lot going on with him. We'll pop him up to here. And as for a turn, I think we're gonna turn him slightly south. South is in back of the table. Let's see if this one's coming there, that one's going up there, this one will come around here and maybe make some Spitfire soup here in the center. Either that or the Spitfire strategy of kind of picking off the, uh, the 109s will work out to their advantage. So we'll mark him and pop him up to neutral. No reason not to with that pilot action that we have. And that brings us down to our last Spitfire. And we're going to move him forward up to here for seven inches. And do we want to turn him at all? He's kind of, this one's heading this way. He's heading a little bit that way. And I kind of want to make use of that cloud with both of them. So we're going to give him just a very slight turn and pop him up as such as well. We'll go ahead and mark him as complete. You know, I was actually just kind of thinking about it. I could have gotten some of the uh, the land pieces from Black Seas and maybe put them out just to look like islands down below. But I don't think there's a whole lot of islands in the English Channel anyway, which is where these aircraft would have been meeting. All right, so looking at our situation, we see both sides closing in on each other, obviously, but both going with different tactics, just kind of seeing what's gonna happen. The 109's trying to hit the flanks. This bottom one coming in around the south side of this cloud, this one heading for the cloud, that one looking to use the cloud to its advantage so it can burn advantage and then gain some extra speed flying through it because it knows it's gonna come out neutral anyway. Uh, so that wouldn't do as much for one that's already advantaged, but a Spitfire like this that's neutral, right? Flying through it burn that advantage, gain that extra speed or gain that extra maneuverability for the 180 degree turn. And then know that using that cloud, you're not going to lose that advantage because you're neutral anyway. So you're going to have to, so you're going to be getting that back. But remember, this game isn't like the other games, uh, air combat type games where you can just shoot to shoot, right? It's not, you just get a guy in your gun sights and roll the dice and hope for the best you have to out advantage him. So it's it's all about getting him in that right position where you have the advantage over him, some type of advantage over him. Advantage to neutral, advantage to disadvantage, but you're not shooting up that chain of command. You gotta be shooting down. You gotta take advantage of the guy when his, uh, his back's turned, I guess, so to speak. Uh, but next uh, video, we'll jump right back into it. You guys will see as the shooting starts and we'll show how these clouds are going to affect things because they do affect uh, shooting. They affect the advantage level, all that good stuff. All right, but we're going to pause here for this one. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.